Welcome to Rosh Hashanah before Rosh Hashanah. Today we are going to be doing part 6 of, of we're going to be doing the second parak, Perak Bays, Mishnah Aleph and Bays. In the previous chapter, in the previous parak, our Mesechta, our tractate discussed in detail the circumstances um, of the witnesses coming before the Beis Din to testify that they had seen the new moon. In this chapter, the Mishnah goes on to discuss their arrival and the various procedures which took place by the Beis Din in order to Mekadish the Chodesh, in order to sanctify the new month. A Mishnah starts off and tells us, Im einon makirin oisoy, If they, the Beis Din, do not know him, which means if they do not know the witnesses, Mashalchin acher imoy lahaidoy, Then the local Beis Din would have to send along with the witnesses a pair of witnesses with him to testify about him, to testify that he was a trustworthy individual who could be believed for such a thing. And the Mephoshim discuss over here whether it had to be an individual, because it says, Meshachin Acher Imoi, whether one was able to testify about this individual, or whether, or whether it was necessary that there would be actually two people, just like any other edus, any other testimony, for two people to testify. But at any rate, the purpose was to, test, to, to testify that this person was trustworthy, that he could be believed. Now just as a preface to the next piece of the Mishnah, why is it that the local basin would have to send along, together with, uh, would have to send along to the big basin in Yerushalayim, such uh, uh, witnesses to testify to the validity and trustworthiness of these people? Seemingly we have a rule, and that is that, If any person comes along and testifies, um, we believe their testimony. Why would we need, why was it necessary, in order to believe the testimony on the Kiddush HaChodesh, that they also come along with witnesses to testify as to their validity and their trustworthiness. The reason is as follows. In the time of the second Beis Hamikdash, there was a sect within Judaism called the Stukim. These were people who didn't believe in the Torah Shabbat Peh. They didn't believe in the, in, the, in the oral law. They took the verses, the Psukim, literally as they are. For example, when the Torah says that you shall put the tefillin bein and nechel between your eyes, they literally put it between their eyes. One of the things which they had done was one of the one of the greatest points of dispute, rather, was when the Torah commands us and says that you shall start counting the Omer, start counting from Pesach, from the day after Pesach, in order to to count fifty days until you come to Shavuos. The Torah presents it in the following way: the Torah says you shall count mimacharas hashabbos from the day after Shabbos. Now the tradition tells us, our Chachamim tell us that what it means the day after Shabbos literally the day after the day of rest, it doesn't mean Shabbos itself, as we know Shabbos was Saturday. What it means is the day after Yontif. And that's when we start counting from the second night of Pesach. We start counting towards Shavuos. But the Baitusim and the Tztukim, these people who only believed in the Torah Shabbichsav, only, only in the written law, took it literally. And they would say that Pesach, that you only start counting the Omer, on the Sunday after the Shabbos, which had come after, which, which was after the first days of, of, of Pesach, after the Yom Tov of Pesach. For them, it would come out that uh, Shavuos would always be on, on a Sunday. They therefore, what happened one year, the Gemara tells a story, how the Baitusim, or the Stukim, as they were known, attempted to deceive the Beistin. The 30th of other that year was on a Shabbos. The new moon had not yet been sighted. The Stukim hired witnesses to testify that they had seen it. Therefore, that's making that Shabbos day the day which was the uh, making that day Rosh Chodesh Nisan, and as a result of which, making that that uh, m- making that sh- that they would start counting the Omer exactly on the Sunday, the day after Shabbos. Because of that, the Chachamim said that even though they had made, that they had managed to, to, to find the, uh, to, 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 to foil that plan, the Chachamim decided, the Chachamim said that they are not going to accept testimony from any person unless they have other witnesses testifying as to their trustworthiness. So that's what the Mishnah continues and says, Originally, they accepted testimony about the new moon from anyone. But after the heretics, after the, the Stukim did harm, they decided, Hiskimu, they enacted, the sages enacted, Shaloyihu Mekablin Elamant Minakirim, that they would only accept 
testimony from people that they knew, people who were known to them or that they had others testifying as to their uh, validity. Carries on second mission and says, But it's showing the Ohio Masin Masuas. Originally, the way that it worked was that they used to light torches in order to tell the people the based in would would uh, would uh, uh, would say which day was was Rish Chodesh, and they would have to tell people inform the people which day was Rish Chodesh, so they would know which day to keep Yontif. Originally, they would light torches. Mishakil Kaluha Kutim, but after the Kutim did harm, now the Kutim were a group of people who had been transported, they were not natives to Eretz Yisrael, they were not indigenous people, they had been transported into Eretz Yisrael by King Sancheirev, the purpose of being, because Sancheirev moved people around in order to, to ensure that no nation become too strong in a, in, in a particular place, and after he had <coughs> exiled the ten tribes, which eventually became called the, uh, known as the ten lost tribes, he moved in a group of people known as the Kutim, otherwise known as the Shamroinim, or the Samaritans, well, they were anything but good Samaritans because they were constantly a thorn within the side of the Jewish people and they did things just to spite. Not like the Tztukim who did it for a purpose. They did it just to spite. It says, Originally, the way that it worked is that the base then would, would light candles, light, sorry, light torches in order to inform the populace that, that the, that the, which they had been chosen as Rosh Chodesh. As the, as the following Mishnah will discuss that whole procedure, but when the Kutim did harm on purpose, they enacted that messengers should go forth instead. What happened was, the Gemara tells a story how the Kutim decided on a particular year to mess up the calendar on a particular date. Some say it was actually on Rosh Hashanah, on, on Rosh Chodesh Tishrei, which would have been Rosh Hashanah. They sent out messengers um, sorry, they, 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 lit these, they lit torches in order to confuse the people, even though that the Basin had not chosen that day to be Rish Chodesh, and therefore it created a huge confusion with the, within the people. The Sanhedrin therefore decided, from now on, we are going to have to send messengers in order to inform the people which day is Rish Chodesh.